Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about paper chromatography. Complete detail explanation will be given for you in this video along with the applications. So please watch this video till the end. So coming to the principle. So normally what is the aim of this chromatography? Chromatography technique is mainly used for the separation of the molecules from the sample. So how that separation occurs with the help of chromatography technique and even the types of chromatography will be there along those types among those types the paper chromatography is one of them okay so coming to this paper chromatography the separation of the mixture components by using paper as a stationary phase is called as paper chromatography so in each and every type technique of chromatography stationary phase and mobile phase will be present right but here the stationary phase the type of the stationary phase which you take depends upon the technique which you use okay so here in this technique of paper chromatography the stationary phase which we are using is paper because we are uh, we are doing the technique of the paper chromatography the stationary phase which you have to take is paper whereas if you see in the case of mobile phase solvent will be similar for each, each and every technique of the chromatography so here the materials which are mainly required are stationary phase mobile phase and sample so here the stationary phase which you have to take is called paper i have said you and here the mobile phase which you have to take is called solvent and even the solvent will be similar for each and every type of technique and you have to take a sample and that sample which you will take depends upon your wish okay so now let us see the technique which is mainly involved in this paper chromatography so firstly you have to take a paper okay so firstly you have to take a paper so which type of paper you have to take what man number one filter paper so that is a filter paper which you have to take so this is uh, and that paper is called a stationary phase which i have said you in the materials required and the next that paper should be marked with start point as well as the end point so this will be the paper right so for this paper the start point will be marked as well as the end point will be marked okay so this is called a start point and this will be called as end point so in the next step what you have to do is sample should be placed on the start point on the line of the start point so this is the start point right on the start point sample should be placed the red color dot which i have drawn is known as sample so that sample should be placed on the start site okay so this will be your third step so next coming to the another step what you have to do is so now this stationary phase has got ready right so this stationary phase which has got ready should be dipped into mobile phase which consists of solvent so here the mobile phase is nothing but the solvent so that stationary phase should be dipped into the mobile phase so stationary phase is nothing but the paper and the mobile phase is nothing but the solvent so the paper should be get dipped into the solvent okay make sure that the total stationary phase should not get dipped only the sample should the, the mark of the sample should only be dipped into this mobile phase okay so as shown in the case of the diagram so now what happens in the next step so finally the observation which we lead is that the migration of the substances occurs from the sample which you take like this different colors of the migration of the particles will be observed okay so this is this is the case of the observation so this migration of the substances or the particles depends upon the size of the sample the nature of the sample and also the kd value okay remember this one so here this will be the final stage so what is the technique which is involved in this paper chromatography so firstly you have to take a paper which is called a stationary phase and mark start point as well as the end point on this paper and now we have to place a sample on the start point and then what happens now you have to take a sample which will be dipped into the mobile phase remember complete stationary phase of paper should not get dipped into the mobile phase which consists of solvent only the mark up to the start point should get dipped which consists of sample so now what happens this will be the observation which you have which you get so here the migration of the substances you can see within 5 minutes or also 10 minutes okay and here the migration of the substances or particles depends upon the size of the sample nature of the sample and also the kd value so now what you have to do what is the main purpose of this paper chromatography for finding the rf value so here the form formula of this rf value is distance traveled by the solute from origin by divided by distance traveled by the solvent from the origin okay so this will be the formula of the rf value so rf value will be uh, will be concluded by the observation only so this will be the one dimensional technique so normally two types of techniques will be involved in this paper chromatography one dimensional technique and two dimensional technique so normally in this paper chromatography two dimensional technique will be used but not one dimensional technique okay so two dimensional technique and one dimensional technique so normally in only some cases one dimensional technique will be used but in many cases two dimensional technique only will be used because the proper results which will be obtained will be only from the two dimensional technique but not from the one dimensional technique because if you use one dimensional technique there are chances of the mixture mixing of this 
mixing of this migration of the substances i mean here the proper migration of the substances has been occurred but in some cases this migration of the substances will not get occurred properly it will get diffused but separation doesn't occur properly but if you see in the case of two dimensional technique the proper proper separation of the molecules occur but the less the, the less amount of diffusion occurs so here the two dimensional technique is very much useful and it is very very much positive result will, will also be shown by this two dimensional technique only rather than this one dimensional technique okay so the separation of the molecules will occur proper as well as there will be no diffusion of the separated molecules but if you see in the case of one dimensional technique here also the separation of the molecules occur properly but only in some cases only but if it depends upon the type of the sample which you use because only some uh, you know small molecules only some amount of the in that two in the microgram quantity only should be used as a sample if you do more than micro quantity then the diffusion occurs separation of the molecule doesn't occurs only the diffusion occurs okay so here two dimensional technique is nothing but so what is the main difference of this one dimensional technique as well as the 2d technique that's nothing but in one dimensional technique the stationary phase will be uh, presented as a vertical position like this the vertical position but if you see in the case of two dimensional technique this stationary phase will be tilted towards right side okay when it will be placed towards right side then what happens it will be placed in a horizontal position which one the stationary phase which is called as paper should be placed as a horizontal position because it will be tilted towards right side okay so when it will get tilted towards right side this will be the start point and this will be the end point so the sample will be placed towards the towards the you know start point and then the diffusion will not occur here properly only the you know separating of the molecules will occur so here the separating of the molecules will occur like this in the towards the right side position so this will be the two dimensional technique so now let us see the development of chromatography so here it includes type of paper preparation of paper preparation of solute mixture spotting of solute mixture choice of solvent development of technique so all of them will be discussed now so here type of paper that's nothing but here at the stationary phase we have used paper right so here that's nothing but in this we have in the stationary phase we have used paper so what i have said you the paper which we will use in the stationary phase is called as wattman number 1 filter paper because maximum separation occurs only in this wattman number 1 filter paper only rather than this normal paper okay so why what is the main difference between this wattman number 1 filter paper as well as a normal paper which you take because in wattman number 1 filter paper this type of nutrients will be present that's nothing but alpha cellulose beta cellulose pentosones ashes all of this will be present only in this wattman number 1 filter paper so it is better to use wattman number 1 filter paper for this chromatography technique so this is the type of paper which you use so preparation of the paper so the main uh, you know how this preparation of the paper occurs you know first of all you will take a wattman number 1 filter paper and you have to cut that paper with an appropriate size as well as the appropriate shape and then you have to wash that paper so why you have to wash that paper because for the removal of the impurities because impurities will be present on that number 1 filter paper right so to remove that impurities which are present on the number 1 pil filter paper the it should be washed properly and then only it should be used for the experiment okay so coming to the third one preparation of the solute mixture i have i have said you that the solute mixture should be prepared solute mixture is nothing but the sample which you take remember the the sample which should be taken should be only in the microgram quantity only but not it should not be in the milligram it should be only in the microgram only okay so that the sample should be uh, you know extracted from the syringes or else from the capillary tube and from this capillary tube and syringes it should be applied on the paper at the start point and again the total procedure will be completed as i have said you in the technique so coming to the fourth one spotting of the solute mixture the spotting of the solute mixture occurs where at the start point only so that is not very much required so here choice of the solvent so here normally three type of solvent will be used here polar solvents non polar solvents and another one is moderate polar solvents so solvent is what solvent is nothing but the mobile phase which i have said you at the procedure the solvents are nothing but the which are taken at the mobile phase so here at the mobile phase three types of solvents will be used polar solvents non polar solvents and moderate polar solvents so here the type of solvents which will be used depends upon the type of the sample which you have to take okay remember so now development of the technique so here this is very much important to remember so here three types of development techniques will be used here ascending technique descending technique and radial technique you know so first let us discuss about the ascending technique ascending technique is nothing but which i have said you just now so 
here ascending technique and here the particles migration of the particles moves towards upward direction that's nothing but which will move against to the gravitational force so when the arrow mark is present towards downward it obeys the gravitational force when the arrow mark is present towards upward it doesn't obey the gravitational force that's nothing but it moves against to the gravitational force okay so it this occurs in the ascending technique okay so now come into the descending technique so here how this descending method will be formed how this apparatus will be formed let us see now so here this will be a chamber okay this this square will be a chamber and within this chamber paper will be present and in this paper what happens is that the end point sorry the state start point as well as the end point will be marked the black color one line which i have drawn here is known as start point and the green color one which i have drawn is known as end point at the start point the you know sample the red color one dot which i have drawn is known as sample which will be placed here and now this one is known as mobile phase mobile phase is nothing but which consists of solvent so with the help of solvent what happens this sample will get disrupted in such a way that the migration of the particles occurs towards downward direction because it is presented you know this this has been presented towards downward only how why it is presented towards downward because the mobile phase is present upward direction so as the mobile phase is present at the you know at the top then the migration of the particles will move towards bottom okay that's the only one thing which you have to remember so yeah, in, in the name itself it indicates it is a called as descending method okay so now radial development method so this ascending method will be mostly used this descending method is not muchly used i mean only only in a rare cases this descending method will be used and complete complete combining you know coming to this radial development method it will be used only in a rare cases okay so what is this the radial development method so here radial development method is nothing but the sample which you take which you will take will be present at the middle of the stationary phase stationary phase is nothing but the paper so the paper should be at the circular form should be in the circular form so at the middle of this stationary phase sample should be placed and this stationary phase will be dipped in the mobile mobile phase which consists of solvent and again the total process occurs that's nothing but the you know separation of the molecules occur so how the separation of the molecules will occur throughout the you know throughout the paper that's nothing but in the circular manner only the separation of the molecules occur so normally if you see in the case of ascending method the separation of the molecules will move towards upward direction whereas in the descending method the separation of the molecules will move towards the downward direction whereas if you see in the case of radial development method the separation of the molecules can be seen in a circular form that's nothing but here total it can be seen why in the circular form because here the stationary phase that the paper which you have to we, which we took is in the circular form only right that's only the reason the separation of the molecules will also occur in a circular only so here this is about the development method so do you think that the chromatography technique has been completed the answer is no why because after the completion of this development method what happens is that you have to remove that uh, wait a sec so here after the completion of this paper chromatography technique what you have to do is you have to remove this stationary phase that's nothing but you have to remove this paper so after removing of this paper what you have to do you have to dry it under a dryer so after drying what you have to do now you have to dip it in a kmn4 potassium permanganate solution or else you have to keep it under uv light so why you have to keep it under uv light or potassium permanganate solution because for a proper observation of this migration of the particles okay so that's only the reason why we have to dip in kmn so for solution that's nothing but the potassium permanganate solution or else the which will be present under the uv light okay so what you have to do after the completion of this chromatography technique you have to so you know you have to remove this paper from this mobile phase and after removing this paper which are also called as stationary phase from this mobile phase then you have to place it under uv light first you have to do air drying and then you have to place it under uv light so when you place it under uv light then this all of these molecules can be clearly observed or else you can also dip it in potassium permanganate solution so that the molecules can also be clearly observed so by this you can find the rf value so this will be about the paper chromatography technique so if you like my explanation so yeah wait a sec come to the applications so here separation of organic and inorganic compounds occurs and the other separation of purification methods occur and here analysis of amino acids separated spots will be visualized by an anhydrin reagent and here identification of halide ions can be occur only by uh, you know ammonical ergno3 that's nothing but the silver nitride which will acts as a visualizing agent so when you will a visualizing agent is nothing but as i have said you in previous here uh, the potassium permanganate will be used for the proper observation of that you know separated particles right so here that observation can be seen by using this visualizing agent whereas in that case i have said you potassium permanganate but if you want to identify the halide ions then you should use ammonical silver nitrate as a visualizing agent only 
So another separation of carbohydrates and some other pigments can also be seen. So this will be your applications. So thank you for watching this video guys. If you like this video, just do like and subscribe. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment in the comment box. And for proper notes on this paper chromatography, the you have you can join us in WhatsApp group and the invite link of that WhatsApp group will be given in the description box. Thank you.